Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. We can depend on God. We can depend on God. Certainly give honor to God, my Heavenly Father. Thank God for Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and my Savior. Thank God for our pastor, Dr. Fuller, doing his uh, travels. Certainly give honor to my lovely wife, Cheryl. We call her Cheryl. 41 years. Praise you. Thank God for all the ministers of the gospel, the deacons, the trustees, the administrative staff, and all God's people. Those who are viewing by YouTube, Facebook, and everyone, everyone present in the audience, we thank God for every one of you. Never take your present for granted. God is good. I'm telling you. Uh, you know, Pastor gave me three weeks notice about preparing for this message. You know, I'm. <laughs> you know, I, I graduated from Math um, uh, Webster University and. Uh, See, Webster, you know, they, they teach you how to prepare for, uh, prepare for, for you to get your doctorate, you know. They teach you how to do research, and, you know, I'm, I'm a, I have a, I know how to do research, so I've been doing research on this subject, so y'all in for a treat today, I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, normally when I was, you know, when I was young in the ministry, you know, I, I, I used to have... My message, you know, I used to have three or four ready to go. Have them, used to have them in my hip pocket. They used to call them hip pocket training. You know, have them ready to go. Ready, ready to go. But, you know, now I take time to get them stirred up, ready to go, and ready to go. All right, we're going to preach this word and teach or whatever how God uses it. Hopefully it will be beneficial to the church, Okay. All right, Matthew's chapter 15, verse 21, verse 228. They could get the presentation ready. We'll go there. Coming to Jesus weeping, hearing the mother too. You don't have to stand. Well, you can go ahead and stand. We're going to come into Jesus weeping. We'll get there. Uh, we go to the next one. We'll talk about that one. The next one, please. These are the four things that we're going to talk about. I have four focus. Four focus. Uh, we're going to talk about these four things. Uh, Jesus is met with a request from a Canaanite woman. Jesus give a cold response to a request for a Gentile woman. Then Jesus, uh, the Canaanite woman, persistent appeal to Jesus. And then we're going to finish up. Jesus reward this great faith of this Gentile woman. We're going to talk about these things. Sound like a lot, but we're going to go through these. It's kind of short. We're going to go through these. And we're going to talk about these. And then our very first one. And we go to the very first one. Number one. Jesus is met with a request from a Gentile woman in our scripture lesson. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 through 22. This will be our scripture, and we're going to just read that one, and we'll be seated, and we'll pray. 
Jesus met a met Jesus is met with a request from the Gentile woman. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercies. Father, you are a great and awesome God. We love you. We praise you. We appreciate you. We understand that you are a spiritual God. We need your spirit to lead and guide us on today. Father, we know that people are waiting to hear your word. We ask you, O oh God, to speak to your servant to deliver your word with clarity. Feed your people, O oh God. Let them hear and receive and meet their needs exactly where they are today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the house in the presence of the Lord. Okay. I'm going to sit. I'm going to stand here right here uh, for a minute to get rid of my nervousness. Y'all know preachers get nervous, don't you? Y'all know that, don't you? Uh, <laughs> I've been preaching for about 30 years. <laughs> Still getting nervous when I stand up. <laughs> Lord, help me. Uh, Jesus previously attempted to withdraw from the, from the religious leaders and crowds. Now, that is according to Matthew chapter 14, verse 34. He attempted to withdraw himself from the religious leaders and crowds. However, too many desperate people wanted his help and willing to travel far and wide and hunt him down wherever he went. Now Jesus and his disciples made an another attempt to withdraw from the people and the Pharisees. He leaves Israel and entered pagan Gentile territory. Specifically, Jesus traveled east to Gal uh, from Galilee to the district of the Gentile town Tyre, and Sidon. Jesus was much less likely to be known and pursued outside of Israel. First, I would like to look at the difference between a prayer warrior and an intercessor. A prayer warrior can pray for a thing to be done without necessarily being willing for the answer to come through him or herself. And he or she is not even bound to continue in the prayer until the prayer is answered. But an intercessor is responsible for gaining his or her objective and they can never be free to, until they have gained it. God is looking for people who will pray on the behalf of people and nation of the earth. An intercessor is one who pleads the case for another to God, asking him for divine intervention. The Canaanite woman in this story is an intercessor. We start here with Jesus moving to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon was Gentile cities located about 55 miles from Capernaum. You know Capernaum was Jesus Christ's headquarters where he moved in and out. Jesus went all this way to meet this one Gentile woman and meet her need. 
This shows the remarkable and unexpected love for Jesus to this woman. And we will prove that when we get towards the end of this message. Now, the Gospel of Matthew used the old term Canaanite. Shows that he cannot forget her ancestry. Now, a descendant of Israel, ancient enemy, comes to the Jewish Messiah for a blessing. It, it, it was unlikely for Jesus to go to the region of Tyre and Sidon. At that time, or not much later, based on many experts, because the Phoenicians, the Tyrians, have had the most ill feelings toward Jews. They didn't like the Jewish people and vice versa. Here this woman cried out, have mercy on me. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. This woman came to intercede for her daughter, and she provided a picture of an effective intercessor. Her great need taught her how to pray. She had been going through, and her need in her life taught her how to pray. Sometimes the things in our life teaches us how to pray. So she knew how to pray. Lord, have mercy. I want to take this thing time and get you to the point to where I want you, to, where I want you now. Her great need taught her how to pray. When she came to Jesus, she made her daughter need her own. She didn't come on her behalf. She came on her need of her daughter. Demon oppression and possession was common around the known world of that time. Existence of demons was not disputed. Too many people have seen person oppressed by a demon to doubt it. Various symptoms of demon oppression witnessed in the New Testament include dramatic personalities and various changes in that personalities. Refusals to wear clothing, supernatural strength, Violent actions, illness of various sorts, being mute or dead, and sometimes tossed in the water and fire. This woman said, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. She cried out, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. This Gentile woman also understand, understood who Jesus was. Many of Jesus' own countrymen did not know who Jesus was. But this woman of Canaan knew. Here a non-Israelite Canaanite woman came to him. She is crying, and she asks Jesus for mercy, addressing him as Lord and Son of David. This woman reference indicate she knew something about Israel and Judaism. I am pretty sure that she heard something about God. I am pretty sure she heard that he was Elohim the strong creator God. 
I'm pretty sure that she heard that he is El Shaddai, God Almighty, creator, keeper of his promise. Perhaps this woman knew that Jesus had healed Gentiles before. For example, in Matthew 4, verse 23, I want you to think about this now. In Matthew 4, verse 23 through 24, listen to this. Matthew 4, verse 23 through 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Then his fame went out throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases, torment, and those were demon-possessed, epileptic, paralytics, and he healed them. Great mother to followed, yet made this encounter, what made this encounter unique is that Jesus did those miracles as Gentiles came to him in the Jewish territory. Here Jesus came to the Gentile territory and met this woman. So this woman heard about Jesus' fame. Evidently, this woman heard that the fame of Jesus and his power to heal. She heard about Jesus. Now, somehow or another, Jesus made his way to this woman and some reason, this woman made her way to Jesus. Number two, please. Matthew chapter 15, verse 23, 24. She heard about Jesus. Jesus come to her, trying to get relaxed from the crowd. Jesus give a cold response to the request of the Gentile woman. Now verse 23 tells us, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Come into Jesus weeping, hearing the humble. Coming to Jesus weeping, hearing the humble. But he answered her not a word. Though the Gentile woman interceded for her daughter, Jesus did not immediately give her an encouraging word. His silence drew more energetic and faith-filled response from this Gentile woman. As some theologian put it, the word, Jesus Christ being the word, spoke not a word that was so unlike Jesus. He who, has, he who was always so ready with a response to the cry of those who was with grief, but now he had no response to her, to this woman who was in grief. Jesus had no response. Now his disciples 
said, send her away. Send her away. She cries after us. It is likely that the disciples meant send her away by giving her what she want. It is entirely possible but that they just wanted her to go away. She's getting on our last nerve. But however, they have seen Jesus speak the word. On some occasion, Jesus just spoke the word and some miraculous event took place. They possibly meant maybe if he just speak the word and her daughter could be healed. Or maybe Jesus could just lay hands on her and once she got home, she could lay hands on her daughter and she could be healed. Whatever combination, whatever you do, Lord, send her away. Ah, it is entirely possible they just wanted her to go away. And that being the easiest way for Jesus to fix her problem. Jesus said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus defined his focus of his mission to the irritated disciples and to the Gentile woman. He made it clear. He was not sent to the Gentiles like her. Like her. Jesus used the same language with her as he as he sent the disciples out in Paris. You remember when Jesus gave the disciples his, their initial mission, mission? He sent them out two by two. He used the same language. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 through 6, he strictly forbid them and to go into Gentile territories. They are only to take the message of the kingdom to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is the same reason given her for refusing for now to cast out the demons from the daughter of, her, of this Canaanite woman, begging him for help. He tells her he had not been sent, but by, the, by his father to heal this Gentile woman for now. So my question is, is it fair to ask whether Jesus meant the lost sheep among the house of Israel or meant to say that Israel as a whole was lost? For Jesus instructed his disciples in Matthew 10, verse 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which implies the entire house of Israel was not lost, just a few. So we do have some righteous Israelites at the time. We're moving right along. Let's go to number three, please. The Gentile woman persistence appeal to Jesus. See, that's the way prayer warriors or prayer intercessors, they are. The Gentile woman persistent appeal to Jesus. Notice how it starts turning. Verse 25 through 27. Then the woman came and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread 
and throw it to the little dogs. Throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, even yet, I want you to look at this, even yet, even, I mean yet even, yet even, yet even, the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Coming to Jesus weeping, hearing the humble. Then she came and worshiped him. Out of all of this, she come to Jesus worshiping him. Lord, help me. She respond to the rebuff from Jesus with increased dedication. Prevail to her request. In so doing, the Gentile woman continued to show what a dedicated intercessor is. Not a prayer warrior, but an intercessor. You see an intercessor, keep pressing. See, a prayer warrior just prays. But an intercessor, keep pressing. Regardless of, you can call me all the names you want to. But I have a mission. I come on the behalf of my daughter. And I'm not about to give up. I'm going to keep pressing. She could not solve the problem of the destiny of her race and of the Lord's commission. But she could pray. If, as a, as a shepherd, he might not gather her in, yet as the Lord, he might help her. Did y'all hear what I said? If as a shepherd, he might not gather her in, but as the Lord, he might help her. But one thing is she continued to pray. Continue to press. Woo! I urge you to seek the, those who seek conversion of others to follow her example. Notice she didn't pray, Lord, help my daughter. But she prayed, help me. I commend this prayer to you because it's such a handy prayer. You could use it when you are in a hurry. Lord, help me. You can use it when you're panicking. Lord, help me. You can use it when you are falling down on your knees. Lord, help me. You can use it when you're up in the pulpit getting ready to preach. Lord, help me. You can use it when you're going to work or stressful on your job. Or going to school. Lord, help me. This is such a handy prayer. Lord, help me. She knew what it took. What she went through life had taught her to pray. Lord, help me. Oh, Lord. Woo, Lord have mercy. Hmm. 
Ooh. That I hardly know any position. Hey! We don't have to go through a long, extensive prayer. Sometimes we can do just like this woman. Lord, help me. Sometimes that's all it takes. Lord, help me. Lord have mercy. Somebody give me a fan up here. Jesus said, Jesus said, I'm good, brother. I'm good. I was just playing. I was just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Having one no moments. Jesus said, Jesus said, it is not good, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Jesus continued to say discouraging things to this woman. Yet this was not quite as severe as we might think it sound. When Jesus called her one of the little dogs, he used little as a way to soften the harshness of calling her a dog. The soft, the soft tradition Jewish slur, slur towards the Gentiles, which called them dogs in the most derogatory sense. We are not at great, we are at a great disadvantage of not hearing the tone of Jesus. We don't know the vo his tone in his voice when he said this to her. We suspect that his tone was not harsh, but rather we suspect that it was pleasant with, an of, with the effect of inviting great faith from the woman. It is possible that we can speak harsh words in playful and pleasant manner. That is possible. <clears throat> Think about this. Think about this now. The harshest words, dogs, contain a loophole in that time, in that tradition. The harshest words, dogs, contain a loophole in that tradition. Dogs do not compare Gentiles to the dogs in the streets, but the household dogs that belong to the family, which have their portion, though not the portion that belong to children. The dogs had their own portion, and the children had their own portion. Is that something? Think about that now. Rather than being offended, the woman seems to clearly grasp that analogy. The children of God are the chosen people of Israel. The bread is Jesus' ability to heal and cast out the demon. The dogs are the pagan Gentiles. That food has a primary purpose and a primary recipient. Jesus make known there is an obligation to use it. Did y'all catch that? <clears throat> In response, Showing both great wisdom and great humility. She answered that the master, Jesus, can choose to allow the dogs to eat the crumbs. 
Jesus can choose the dog that you called me to eat the crumbs. In other words, that which was offered to the children and either wasted or rejected, something the master would happily let others take. In all this, she never wavered, being convinced that Jesus was truly the Messiah and that it was within his power to cast the demon out of her daughter. She took all that, being rejected, called a little dog, but still she kept her focus. The woman said, Yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. The woman responds with great faith. She omitted her lowest state, and that did not debate the issue. When Jesus called her one of the little dogs, she did not demand to be seen as a child, but only to be blessed as a little dog. Did y'all hear me? She didn't demand to be called a little child. She didn't care if she was called a little dog. She said, it doesn't matter if you bless me as a little child. It doesn't matter if you bless me as a little dog. As long as you bless me. She had a focus to receive her blessing. If you want to bless me as a little dog, I don't care. Her response is, is especially meaningful considering the increasing rejection of the Jesus and the Jewish religious leaders. It was if the woman said, I'm not asking for the portion that belonged to the children. All I'm just asking for the crumbs that they don't want. That's all I'm asking for. I'm just asking for the crumbs. In the flow of Matthew's gospel, there was more and more that the Jewish religious establishment didn't want. All the same, the woman once again kneeled and begged for Christ's help. This woman has something in common with two women who asked for help from two, from two prophets in the Old Testament. The Sardinian woman and the Shunammite woman who will not take no for an answer from prophet Elijah in 1st King and then prophet Elisha in 2nd King perspective respectfully both women daughters I mean sons had died and both prophets performed miracles to bring their sons back to life they both refused to take no for an answer so this woman had something to fall back on being Gentile women in the Old Testament, she knew that she can fall back on them. Well, Miss Lady, possibly someone has whispered in your ear, suppose you are not one of the elect or chosen one. Well, that was very much what our Lord expression meant to her. Now this woman did not struggle with that truth at all. She did not raise any question about it. She wisely renounced it and instead just goes on praying, Lord, help me. Lord, have mercy on me. I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to do the same. These were two faith-filled words. Yet even, yet even, she accepted Jesus' description 
and ask for mercy despite it or perhaps because of it. She would not give up. Though her three rejections from Jesus Christ had three full, full blasted rejections from the master himself, so she said like Jacob, as he wrestled with God, I will not let you go until you bless me. And as he, like the prince, so she, like a princess, prevailed with God to attain the things which she desired. Amen. And we have made it to the last one. Let's go to number four. Give y'all self a hand clap. Are we coming down to the end? Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Jesus reward the great faith of the Gentile woman. He reward the great faith. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was, made he was, was healed from that very hour, coming to Jesus weeping, hearing the humble. Finally, can someone say finally? The woman will receive encouraging words from Jesus. Oh, woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. Jesus never said this to another person. He complimented the great faith of the Roman centurion who asked Jesus to heal his servant. Now, that is according to Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. But he said it to the crowd. You remember the centurion asked for the heal for his servant, but Jesus spoke this to the crowd, not directly to the centurion. This Gentile woman heard it directly to G from Jesus' mouth. Instantly, her daughter is healed. Instantly. Yes, you can go ahead on and give God the praise. Instantly. Instantly, her daughter was healed. You notice what she went through. Pressing. We serve an awesome God. The term used implies the devil has called the daughter to be sick or afflicted in some way. Now the demon is gone. The affliction is gone as well. Great is your faith. Significantly, the only one, the only two people to receive this compliment from Jesus was two Gentiles. This shows that great faith may be found in unexpected places. Not just Gentiles, but a centurion and a woman. Great faith is sometimes measured by its disadvantages. Their faith was great because it did not have the advantage of being nourished by institution of Judaism. Faith is often great when it is expressed on the behalf of someone else's need. I said great faith. Jesus said great is your faith. No one else received this from Jesus as an accolade. Oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Her faith was great enough to receive her request. What she desired from Jesus. Her faith was great. Even compared to her own or other virtues. 
She was humble. She was patient. She was persevering. She cared for her child. Yet Jesus didn't compliment any of all those other good things. Only her faith. Her faith was great because it was unlikely. No one might have expected a Gentile to trust Jesus so much. Her faith was great because she worshipped. Jesus, even before she had received an answer from him, her faith was great because it had been tested so severely. It, had a, it is hard to, to think of great faith when it's tested uh, having a, a demon-possessed child. But her faith was so tested, even by the seemly indifference of the coldness of Jesus. Her faith was great because it was clever. She turned Jesus' words inside out and made it what might have been taken as an insult into a door open of faith. Her faith was great because it concerned a need right in front of her face. And it was a real need at that. Many people have faith in everything else except the things right in front of them. Her faith was great because she would not give up. She did not stop until she got what she needed from Jesus. Saints, we know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible says it is impossible to please God. It didn't say it's difficult to please him. It says it is impossible to please him. You could say that her faith dominated Jesus. He not only healed her daughter, but he did it so immediately. Something she had not even asked for. Faith is a currency that moved heaven. She moved heaven, she moved God to get what she needed. Now as we bring this thing to a close, we read nothing else that Jesus did during this time while he was in Tyre and Sodom. Sodom. It was seen that his only divine appointment was to meet this woman's need. And this woman, faith, and afflicted of her daughter. Sometimes we don't understand how God put his words together. But Jesus knew he had a divine appointment to get there to Sidon and Tyre. But this woman knew that she heard about the miraculous power of Jesus Christ. And she had a real need. And God, with his divine plan, calls them to get together. And we see how things work on God's plan and God's timetable. And we see a divine miracle taking shape. Even though we see God's salvation plan working together. Even though we see the plan of God saying, well, the salvation is for the Jews itself. But this woman said, yes, I understand about the Jewish plan, but I want to be included in that plan. And we see how God just made her part of that plan. Oh, God, yes, yes. Closing thought. Let me tell you what I have told you. I'm going to tell you what I have told you. The woman persisted as only a parent of a sick child can. She knelt and pleaded. She had refused to take offense at the analogy that pictured her people as dogs. Instead of focusing on what symbols were used, she fully understood the point of being made. Christ is not insulting her or her people but pointing out that he has an obligation to offer his bread to the children of God. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Saints of God, I presented you to Jesus Christ. Probably in a different way. At any rate, I want you to know that Jesus Christ loved you. He died for your sins. He do not want anyone to leave this earth without knowing him. He wants you to live a life, a life more abundantly. He wants you to live a life of his, in his kingdom as a child of the most high God. I have two pleas that I want to present to you. The first plea is if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, that is the first plea. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, that loving Savior, which towards the end, this woman of Canaan pressed her way because she knew in her heart if she could get to that point where Jesus being the Lord, that he would receive her. Regardless of what is going on in the world or what you heard about, Jesus always stands with his arm wide open to receive you. So if you haven't received the Lord as your personal Savior, I invite you to receive the Lord as your Savior. We all need the Lord. Regardless of what you heard about heaven or hell, they are both a reality. And one day we all is going to cross that threshold. We're going to go to one of those places. And I would love to go where the Sabbath would have no end. To that place where we call glory. Not to that place of outer darkness. So if you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord, I personally invite you to receive him. Thousands and thousands, millions have made that choice and accepted Jesus as their Lord. So I personally invite you to do it today. So if you haven't made the Lord your Savior, I ask, personally invite you to come. Come to Jesus just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. That is my first plea. The doors of the church are open. We serve a loving Savior. Our next plea, the second plea. If you haven't joined a local church, a body of believers, we invite you to join this Mount Zion, this church here, Beauty Spot Missionary Baptist Church, where you will have a shepherd, a pastor. You will have brothers and sisters. You have a deacon, you will have people who will pray for you, you will have people on the gird with you, you have classes to go to, you will have all the institution things that a church consists of that will assist you. Trust me, you need a church, a church where you belong. And plus you have bragging rights in the community. Because that's one of the first or second call form of communication. They always ask you, what church you go belong to? You have bragging rights. You can tell you belong to this fine church here at Beauty Spot Missionary Baptist Church. So if you do not have a church home, I personally invite you to come and join this church. If you are nervous about coming, and if you want to come, if you just raise your hand, I'll personally walk with you, come down there and walk with you. If you just raise your hand, if you're thinking about it, if you're thinking about it, if you're thinking about it, just raise your hand. We'll have somebody to come out there and help you walk with you and we'll make sure you get it done. Two please. Accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and then joining the church. Okay, okay, okay. 
All right, at this time, we're going to have Reverend Kendall. She's going to do the announcements, and then we're going to do the closing prayer and close it out for today.